Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, today we will talk about uh, something which is called luminescence. Now, luminescence is basically one of the things related to light and we are basically talking about light right now. Um, this is the part of the course called Physics for Teens presented at Unizor.com. Um, by the way, this website contains prerequisite course, Mass for Teens. Mass is absolutely necessary to study physics, but for a change, today's lecture will have absolutely no formulas. Yeah, for a change. It's a rare occasion. We'll just talk about certain properties of luminescence and uh, we'll see how it goes. Now, the website is completely free. It contains uh, not only the lectures like this one, but also a textual description notes for each lecture, which basically is like a textbook. Um, so you have lecture and the part of the uh, textbook, if you wish, related to this lecture, right on the same page if you will go to unizor.com. Now, it's a course, Physics 14 is a course, which means there is a menu. It's a hierarchical menu which allows you to basically concentrate on something like a part or a chapter of, of the course, which contains a few lectures. Um, and uh, I do recommend you to, um, to study physics uh, if you are using lectures like this. Study it from the website, not from any other source you might accidentally find it, like YouTube or somewhere else. All right, so let's talk about luminescence. Uh, there are many different kinds of luminescence and there is certain um, process which happens universal for all kinds of uh, luminescence. Now, what is this process? Now, we're talking about emitting light. Okay, that's kind of a general common sense um, description of luminescence. Yes, emitting light. So something becomes the source of light. Question is why and how and what are these processes combined together into one particular term luminescence and then we will divide it into types of luminescence. So in all the cases emitting of light is related to basically one particular physical process. Imagine atom. It contains a nucleus, protons, neutrons, and it contains electrons which are somewhere surrounding, circulating, whatever, um, around this atom. This is our model, basically, which kind of works. Now, there are certain orbits electrons are circulating around the nucleus. Um, it's better to say shells, not orbits, because the word shell basically represents three-dimensional kind of way. So, there are certain shells and uh, certain levels of energy which these electrons possess in a normal state of the atom. Now, what happens if electrons are excited. Well, excited means some other energy comes into this particular part of the of the object and electrons are absorbing that energy. Now, what do they do? Well, they might actually jump from one, uh, uh, from one orbit to another, from one shell to another, which basically changes their the it changes the composition of atom, basically. Now, if there are a certain amount of these electrons excited, accumulated, then they are actually trying to normalize, and they are jumping back, and when they are jumping back to their proper place, proper shell, um, they emit extra energy which they have absorbed before. So, at the moment, this energy is emitted, in many cases, it's emitted as electromagnetic uh, oscillations, which means light. And sometimes it's a visible light. So the general 
um, approach to understanding luminescence means basically it, it, it actually means that electrons excited before excited somehow there are different ways of excitement but that's why we have different ways of different types of luminescence but at the end they give back this energy which they have accumulated before and this extra energy is given as electromagnetic oscillation and sometimes it's a visible light okay so now we can talk about just different kinds of luminescence which basically means different kinds of accumulating initial accumulating of the energy so but there are different sources of external energy which can be accumulated by electrons and that's basically the types of luminescence <coughs> okay so I actually have some cheat sheets here so one of the things is um, electric electric luminescence so electric luminescence means that we will put some electric current into something and that something is supposed to be absorbing energy of this electric current and then this uh, extra energy will excite electrons to a certain degree and when they try to normalize because they cannot be infinitely excited they cannot accumulate energy without giving it back so they will give it back as visible light for example now well sometimes if we do this we will convert this energy um, into uh, light differently using the heat for instance uh, in candescent uh, uh, lamps the regular lamp which which we which we were using using before uh, led or uh, or other things now these lamps were basically related to heat because the uh, tangent inside spiral um, had certain resistance resistance converts into um, uh, heat when you connect it to, uh, to electric potential and the heat actually um, um, basically heat is the source of um, uh, light which is basically emitted by this particular um, uh, tangent sp spiral uh, now luminescence is not that uh, it, first of all it doesn't really take as much energy and the object practically not heated up practically so energy is not really uh, used to well in, in, in case of a heat you, you basically make atoms oscillate that's, that's what heat is and that's what basically results in increasing temperature and eventually um, uh, it, it, it actually produces light in this case it's just electrons which are jumping from one orbit to another from one shell to another accumulating energy and then giving it back so it's a different than in all these lamps kind of thing so electric luminescence requires certain other um, substances so there are certain um, semiconductors and the way how it uh, uh, usually done is the following you have for example um, uh, you can have something like a back backlight you have backlit screens right so how is it arranged um, you have two conductors one is let's say plus another is minus and uh, one of these conductors is transparent and there are certain conductors which which have this property they conduct they can they are conducing electricity but they're still transparent for light let's say it's this part the right part i don't remember actually which one now there is something here it's kind of a semiconductor so something with certain additions and 
this particular substance, it's a result of experiments actually, has this property. So whenever um, uh, uh, voltage is applied to these two conductors, one is transparent, another is not, the electrons inside becomes agitated, excited, and eventually they will give back this particular um, light. So it goes through the transparent uh, transparent electrode or whatever you have contact and emit it outside. So this is the way how flat screens are made actually. So this is electric luminescence. Now other examples well um, Everybody is familiar with old-style TV when they have a CRT screen. TV and uh, computers as well. You had a screen and you had a source of electrons and electrons are bombarding um, some uh, composition which is on the screen some kind of phosphorus or whatever something is uh, um, something is done based on phosphorus I believe primarily and as a result of this bombardment these are electrons so it's still kind of electric uh, luminescence um, now these electrons are bombarding and what does it mean well they carry energy this energy is absorbed by electrons uh, inside this phosphorus and eventually they give it back. So if you direct your um, electrons, um, direction of electrons to this particular point, this point will emit light and in that, that one. So that's how the first televisions and computer screens were made. Computer screens were um, uh, uh, green and black, old ones, so green is basically uh, the um, light which is emitted by phosphorus under the influence of energy um, which came uh, uh, with, uh, with electrons. Televisions, the first televisions were black and white. So again, it was some kind of other um, substance which covered the screens of uh, of televisions on the inside outside was just a glass and from the inside it was um, <coughs> it was with this particular substance electrons um, bombarded and they lit up different points on this particular screen so that's how the first televisions were it's all kind of electric lu luminescence okay um, now, contemporary uh, contemporary um, electric luminescence examples is LED. LED is light emitting diodes. Well, diode is some kind of a semiconductor usually. Light emitting means exactly what luminescence is all about. The electric potential uh, was uh, um, connected to some kind of substance which is this particular semiconductor LED and LED becomes the source of uh, luminescent luminescence uh, source of light so that's how we uh, so that's that's what electric luminescence is now what's all electric about it because some external um, electricity was applied either as a flow of electrons in CRT or just contact with two electrodes which are connected to source of electricity and all this allows uh, whatever the substance is used to start um, emitting light. Okay, next. Next is chemical luminescence. Now, chemical luminescence is, obviously as you understand, this is the uh, result of chemical reaction. Now, certain chemical reaction produce energy, and this energy, in many cases, uh, is the light. 
Now, um, again, everybody probably experience the light stick. You know, you just break it a little bit and it starts um, glowing, right? Uh, sometimes in party, sometimes as a source of light. Uh, movies, when some kind of a cave or, or a well and uh, people are just break this particular, not break, they just uh, uh, slightly bend this particular stick which means something is broken inside, some chemicals um, mix together, start chemical reaction, they throw it in the well or in the cave and it, lit, it, it lights the whatever, whatever is there. That's, diff th that's an example of chemical um, luminescence. All right. Um, then there is something uh, which is called luminol. It's just a substance which, if mixed with hydrogen peroxide, just as an example, hydrogen peroxide, which is H2O2. H2O is just regular water, H2O2 is peroxide, hydrogen peroxide. So mixed with this, this luminol uh, glows basically. So again, it's a chemical reaction. Uh, some heat also is uh, emitted, but what's most important for us right now, what's most importantly is that it emits lights as well. And why? Exactly the same story. Electrons are, uh, of luminol in this particular case, are excited as a result of the chemical reaction and emit light. Okay, uh, Bioluminescence. Yeah, bioluminescence is um, certain live organisms, uh, many of them live in ocean, like bacteria, whatever, they are um, producing electricity, well, very, very um, weak, ele uh, not electricity, sorry, light, very weak light, but still it's light, and uh, it's a result of some chemical process which is occurring inside of these bacteria. That's how they live. Um, all right, so bioluminescence is also another jellyfish, yeah, but jellyfish sometimes is uh, producing electricity. Okay, now, photoluminescence. Well, photoluminescence sounds like um, it, it's a strange thing. Photo means it's caused by light, but luminescence means it emits light. So first you have to absorb the light and then you emit the light a little later probably. So that's what photoluminescence is. Now, um, something like my watch has uh, some phosphorus uh, paint on each number and on, on the hands. Um, so during the sunlight, it accumulates the, uh, the light and if I will go to a dark room after that, I will see my digits and my uh, hands on the, on, the, on the watch. So that's photoluminescence. So again, light, regular light is the source of energy which excites electrons. And after, uh, uh, after this, electrons are, uh, well, it's probably done immediately as well. So the sun goes in and my phosphorus actually is agitated. Electrons, <coughs> electrons are agitated and give it back. But I don't see it when the light is, uh, uh, sunlight is on. But if I will go to another room, there is no sunlight, but the energy is still emitted for some time, short time, but still. Well, actually, how long it would emit energy depends on the substance. I mean, different substances probably can accumulate more and they light up a little bit longer after the source of energy, the sunlight or something, stopped. So that's photoluminescence. So first, exposure to light and then when uh, later on when uh, electrons are relaxing uh, from their excited state, uh, they will gradually return uh, emit the light back. What else? Mechanical, mechanical luminescence. 
Well, mechanical luminescence is sometimes certain substances. If you um, um, if you do something mechanical with them, they emit light. Very interesting example is diamonds, for example. When you cut diamonds, when you make these uh, flat surfaces to to shape the the diamond into into something beautiful. Well, sometimes they do have this effect of emitting light, blue or, or white, and uh, it's it's again very big light, but still you can see it. Uh, but other things, yes, piezo elements. That's another interesting thing. There are certain substances. If you press them, they emit light. So piezo crystals, sometimes quartz crystals. If you will rub them, they will emit light. So that's another source of... what else? I don't remember all these cases. Okay, and the last one is thermoluminescence. Now that's an interesting thing. Thermoluminescence is basically a combination. First, you have to have you have to have a source of energy, for example, some kind of electromagnetic oscillations, radiation. You are radiating some substance. Now, it accumulates this energy, but it does not immediately release it. So it's accumulating, and the electrons are in this excited state. Well, up to an extent, of course. Now, but they do not immediately release this energy as visible light, for example. But if you will heat it a little bit after the fact of radiation, um, then they will start giving back this energy as, as, as light. So that's thermoluminescence. I don't think I have any example of this. I just read about this. Quite frankly, I'm not familiar with all these little cases. Uh, I, I just decided to read it because it's kind of appropriate for this particular course. Um, I think that's the last, that's the last example of uh, luminescence I wanted to talk about. I promise no formulas and I hold my promise. <laughs> so I do suggest you maybe to read um, notes for this lecture. So you go to unisor.com, it's Physics 14's course. The chapter not the chapter, it's part of the course called Waves. And in the Waves, if you will open the next screen, you will see one of the topics uh, to be luminescence. Um, I didn't mention it, but the website is totally free. Um, there are no advertisements, uh, no financial um, strings attached, no mon monetization in any uh, kind. So just use it as you will. All right, that's it for today. Thank you very much and good luck.